What we're going to do is I'm going to throw this in the car and kind of show you how I got it out, walk you through it real quick, and then I'll explain to you um, why this project has kind of turned in a little bit more than I could handle. <laughs> Bedhead. So, of course, if you watched my last episode, you'll be, you'll know I was pretty disappointed that cleaning my grounds really did not fix my traction control module issue. It turns out it's going to be a little bit more complicated of a fix. So, along with the grounds, another common problem with the C5 Corvette is the solder points inside the actual traction control module will go bad. Now there are several resources online and a lot of them are actually going to be similar to the ones I linked last time. When I did a re when I started doing research, the very first thing they suggest is you clean your ground points because that is such a common problem. Then the second thing they suggest is actually pulling out the module, sending it out and getting it fixed. Or I found a really nice resource that kind of tells you how to solder it and hope for the best. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to pull that uh, control module right out of the Corvette. I'm going to give it an attempt to solder. I've actually never soldered myself before this morning. Uh, before this morning, actually. Yeah, that is correct. This morning I went to change the battery in my key fob. It turns out that the, the part that holds the battery in place, the solder points were actually going bad on that. So I resoldered that. So I taught myself this morning. Um, so we're definitely going to be doing that today. Hopefully that fixed my traction control problem issue. And my ABS module is back to, well, back, back to good condition. There is one other thing that it could be. And thank God my cat just got out of my garage because we're going about to go in there. I don't want to open it and let her escape. All right, so with the traction control module another problem could be that the switch inside that module actually goes bad and that I checked online that costs about a buck 20 if you want to go ahead and replace that I don't have that switch I didn't order it so I'm really hoping that's not the issue because if it is I'm well I'm gonna be another couple of days without my baby and that's definitely gonna suck so you know what? I'm actually going to give a hat tip off to Team 512. He always starts his videos with uh, cool cold starts. I've never actually done a cold start on video. So why don't you say, let's get that started. I'm going to pull the Corvette out a little bit, and then let's get in there and pull that module out. So with the vet out, it is actually a really nice day outside. I thought I might have to wear a sweatshirt, but it looks like I'm not going to have to. The sun is plenty warm enough. So down here, you'll notice underneath this hose, which goes into there, is, that's the actual ABS module. Um, I hope you guys can see it fairly well. That's the ABS module. <clears throat> Next to it is the part that's actually we're gonna have to be pulling to get in. Now if you look down in there, it's underneath the power steering reservoir, underneath pretty much the, the shroud for the, the radiator. Really is kind of a pain in the ass to get to, but we are definitely gonna get in there. Now from what I've seen online, other people doing this, the best way that I think to do it is to actually take off this um, this tube that goes into your throttle body and lift this up that way you have a little bit more free access because honestly back here's all your pulleys and stuff so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the battery and then we're gonna go ahead and get in there hey vet head so as you'll see in a minute be behind me uh, 
the sun has certainly changed positions and we're gonna head into the garage and you'll see my Corvette has also changed positions. So let me kind of quickly explain what went on because I realized when I go to edit this, it's not, there's really no coherency. Um, what actually happened was I got so caught up pulling this out of the car that I didn't really realize that I wasn't recording. And I also was not, um, my battery died at some point if the camera was just on. And then I had went in to charge it thinking I would record and then kind of forgot about it. Anyway, I forgot about it. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna throw this in the car and kind of show you how I got it out, walk you through it real quick. And then I'll explain to you um, why this project has kind of turned in a little bit more than I could handle. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, so I'm hoping that this will be clear enough. There is the piece. Now, in this case, I have both plugs unplugged. There is one down here below, but the very first thing you need to do is this needs to flip up and you need to pull the plug straight out of here. Now, this one I had a little bit of difficulty with, but after about mm, 10, 15 minutes, I was able to get it. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. I think there's a tab up here. I ended up pushing a tab up here and it kind of pulled out. Uh, but you definitely need to flip up the gray portion. Now, down below is an easier tab. It comes straight down, and that should be fairly easy. Now, the hardest part of all this, of course, was the six T20 Torx screws. There's two at the top here. There's two about midway down, and then, of course, there's two at the bottom. Now, the hardest thing about this uh, is the fact that the two in the middle and the two in the bottom, you can't see, so you're kind of going in blindly as well as the fact that I didn't move any of this out of the way. Of course, this got bent from me being in there, but I didn't move any of this out of the way. I just kind of went in there. The only thing I moved was my air intake. I took it off the throttle body and propped it up with a roll of towels. Now, for the most part, once I got those torque screws out, that's kind of the hardest part. The next thing is we'll flip over to the other side so that we have a better look. And in this case, you'll see it down in here connected to the actual ABS system. Now, this is actually a really cool system. I do want to point this out while we're in here. If you look at this system, there's actually a series of tubes coming out of it. I think there is six total. There, yeah, there appears to be six total. Actually, each one of these lines up top actually controls one of the brakes individually. So if you're losing control, and I will put a video up in the corner because GM has a nice video on this. I actually did a lot of research once I realized how this system works because it is pretty cool. If you're losing control, the car can actually apply each brake individually to regain control. Now that's a little bit of a digression, so let's just get back into how I pulled this off. So the next thing I did was, I, as you can see, it's now separated, but that's because I actually have something in there blocking it at the moment. You're going to need to get a flathead screwdriver to place it in there. And then what I would suggest is using a soft rubber mallet. Now, I didn't have one, so I certainly used just light banging from a regular mallet and kind of force this off. Now, it'll force forward and eventually it will release. Once it's released, there's actually silicone in there that's holding it on. Once it's released, it's fairly easy to remove as long as you have properly pulled off the cables. All right, Vedhead, so that actually brings us to today where this part is out and I just got it back from a friend. So let me kind of quickly explain. Once I had gotten it out, this part needs to be separated. The casing needs to be separated from the front of the uh, module. So the best way to do that, honestly, is there's a hole on the back with a little silicone in it. Clean out the silicone thread tap it, put a screw or a bolt in like I have, and just kind of start going at it. It'll eventually start to separate. I don't know how well you'll be able to see. It'll separate the, the top from the casing itself. So I actually gave it a shot that, that, that Saturday night, then also gave it a shot on Sunday afternoon. I had about an hour to play with it. I, I tried to get it open, really didn't have any much luck. So I not having a thread tap myself, I had to take it to a friend's who could thread tap it for me. So once I had gotten my friend to thread tap that hole, 
it was not that hard to get the front separated from the casing. Once that had started, using a couple of flathead screwdrivers really only took me 10 minutes at most. There is quite a bit of silicone holding it all together, and because the front facing has a lip on it, it makes it kind of difficult. So I'm going to pull this out. <clears throat> So this is the likely problem with the C1214 code that my car is throwing. Now there are five solder points that you really want to check. It's one, two, and three, four, five. And you can see these three are connected to a switch down below. Um, I will flip it around. It's a switch down below. These are the solder points you want to resolder. Uh, to make sure that the connections are good and everything is going well. Now, I'm not an expert solder. I am certainly not going to tell you how to solder, but I'm going to give them a shot myself, and uh, then we will essentially put this in the car uh, without sealing any of this case to make sure that it works. So let's solder these points and see how everything goes. <laughs> All right, Vethead, so apparently somehow the last few videos I tried to record did not actually get recorded. But I put the part in there for just a trial. It's not completely in there. It's not torque. The torque screws are not in there. And I did not seal the casing up, which we are going to do last. I was hoping to actually get my reaction on the video the first time around, so I kind of know what's going to happen because unfortunately it didn't record. But let's get in the car. Uh, I had some really good shots with my cat too, believe it or not. Let's get in the car and let's turn this on and see what happens. So as you can see, the code is gone. I am very excited about that. I'm totally glad I got to fix that. Uh, I re really, I can't describe how excited I am. I'm really glad that worked, especially because it was such a pain in the uh, ass to do. Um, but I am glad that it worked. The code is not being thrown. Now, if we go into the onboard diagnostics, it will show that it is a historical code. So that's fine I'm, I'm i'm glad that it's there but i'm glad that it's no longer current so i want to double check this is technically the third time i've thrown it uh turned the car on at least the accessories on but let's give it one more shot just to make sure oh yeah all right, so I'm really glad that it worked. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to seal that box up with silicone so that it doesn't get water in there and uh, actually ruin all the work I just did because that would really, really not be, that would suck. So let's get that sealed up with silicone properly installed. And then hopefully tomorrow we'll be, yeah, I'm going to be in my Corvette again going to work. I'm really excited about that. Man, uh, Driving a Pontiac G5 all week sucks, but let's get that fixed finally and put together. Oh yeah, let's go do it. So I wanted to quickly explain, I used compressed air to blow out any of the leftover metal shavings that had come from the thread tab. In addition, I had bought both clear silicone and black silicone. If you open this up, you'll notice that the clear silicone surrounds a lot of the electronics in there. So I just reapplied a new layer. Not that it was really necessary, but it did make me feel a little bit better about my work. In addition, I finally uh, applied the black silicone around the edge after cleaning up as much of the old as I could. I applied a thick layer and then pressed the two pieces together. Once the two pieces had been screwed together, I wiped up any excess silicone that was squeezing from the sides just to keep things nice and tidy for when I installed the part back into my Corvette.
Hey Vetheads, I am actually on my way home from work and I actually don't have a lot of space left on my memory card. So I want to kind of get through this fairly quickly as you get to look at pictures of my cat helping me finish up my project. So from a person who really had no mechanical experience, this project was probably on a scale of one to 10, a solid five. It was a fairly difficult project. I just didn't have a lot of the tools. I didn't personally own a lot of the tools I needed. So I either needed to borrow them, purchase a new set, or in the case of getting a thread tab, I went to a friend's and just had him thread tap that hole for me. So, from that aspect, it was a fairly difficult project. As someone who might have more experience, it probably would only be a solid two or three, honestly. It, it, just getting in there, getting the part out is the hardest part, and pulling open the back. It's kind of, from there, it's, it's fairly simple. All of that being said, I am been about 24 hours since I put the part in and everything is still hunky dory knock on wood I'm pretty excited that it's still working and beyond that if you all have any questions any comments any thoughts uh, I would be happy to answer them please check out all the resources I put in the description below they are incredibly helpful and yeah I will see you on the next episode <laughs>